This is the Miller Philosopher. So this video was a request that was made to me. Um, someone asked me to do something on the Great Plague of the Third Age, which occurred between 1635 to 1637, and whose ramifications stretched out the following 200 years afterwards. Now, I was a bit hesitant to take on this topic. Um, I found it particularly difficult for two reasons. First being that other Lord of the Rings YouTubers have already done great videos on the plague in detail and its effects on Gondor and Arnor. And I didn't want to do just basically another redo or rehash something that someone else had already done. And second being that there's little information on Tolkien's mindset when he added it. Um, just that he decided to mention it in the appendices of Lord of the Rings Return of the King and basically what it did. So there's not really a lot for me to expand upon in terms of, you know, details and intentions and the like. But that being said, however, based on reading some of the history with Sauron and also Morgoth, surprisingly, I think I found a theme um, that kind of runs underneath the plague and what it rep represented in Tolkien's story. So I'm going to approach it from that angle. I think that the Great Plague represents the unknown nature of evil. That is, the hidden nature that is unseen. I'm not referring to armies and orcs and wars and all that nature or evil jewelry or even corrupted characters. Rather, I'm referring to that element of, how shall we say, malicious unknown mystery that seems to accompany the major antagonists of Middle-earth, Morgoth and Sauron. The unknown depths of their minds and of their malice towards anything of the West or towards anything seemingly good or not under their control or to their design. That aspect of not knowing just how far they're willing to go to achieve their ends and the lengths that we only get hints of in the combat that tends to happen across Middle Earth and its history, but nothing that really translates the true death of the horror and fallout, I guess you could say, of their madness, I guess if you want to call it that. Because, you see, what I found was that the Great Plague of the Third Age was not the first one to hit Middle Earth. Untold ages ago, back in the latter centuries of the First Age, a similar plague had also hit the people of Beleriand and was referred to as the Evil Breath. And all that anyone really knew about it was that it came and was spread from the north, where Morgoth's HQ of Angband was located. Therefore, many people just assumed that it was a, we a weapon of Morgoth that he deployed against all his enemies nearby. Since the plague pretty much devastated all the populations in all the bordering territories of Angband, basically. And that the primary casualties of this plague were young people and children. So, notably, Turin, a name that we are all familiar with, also was hit by this and nearly died from it. And also, too, with Turin was his little-known sister named Lalith. I think they pronounced that right. And unfortunately, she died, which is why she's little known compared to her basically younger sister, I guess you can refer to, Nianel. So, having said that, the Great Plague at a Third Age seems to have done much of the same thing, only it wasn't specifically targeting a group of people, per se. But rather, it pretty much targeted everybody west of the Sea of Rune since it apparently originated from the east, and thereby Gondorian historians pretty much assumed that therefore it was a creation of Sauron. Having said that, not only was this plague targeting peoples all across the west and came from the east so that people thought this was Sauron's idea, but also too, this particular plague was even more severe than its ancient ancestor resulting in depopulations of many of the lands of Sauron's enemies. But also, too, it hit his allies as well, 
as we all well know. So, it was also thought that its purpose was not necessarily a preemptive strike via biological attack, essentially, but was more or less a biological strike used to attempt to kind of clear the board so that Sauron can strengthen his Nazgul as well as free up Gondor's siege of his base on Mordor. And this kind of makes a little bit of sense given that despite the heavy losses of constant warfare, both kingdoms of the descendants of Numenor were still able to resist his proxy conflicts that he was sending out. However, I have also read that this may have also been a bias of Gondor, given how the Empire reacted to it, and that the plague may have come from the south via trade and its ports, just, just like the real-world Black Plague did. And I find myself kind of leaning towards this explanation given that if all Sauron had to do was spread a virus across the world to get what he wanted, he could have just done it multiple times and in more portent forms. He literally could have saved himself the trouble, the resources, the lives, and the effort, and simply just waited for all his enemies to literally drop dead. Whatever its origin, the Great Plague clearly carries with it a heavy sense of unknown and unseen malevolence that cannot be fought nor resisted. No army was going to stop this particular threat, and that the only reason that it ceased was just because the range was too far for it to take out everyone completely, and apparently it was not potent enough to wipe out everybody in its strongest areas, even though a lot of those areas were still strongly hit that the depths of which evil can go to to achieve its aims, no one can truly fathom, and that the enemies of the West don't need armies or open warfare to gain victory, but can simply plunge deeper into their well of malice to pull out new types of weapons and devilry out of their ass, basically, to get what they want. And it therefore conveys the fear of ever-present doom, basically, that will eventually overcome all that it goes up against. And that was my take on the Great Plague and what it kind of represented in Tolkien's stories. Again, Tolkien doesn't give a lot of detail about it or any kind of references as to why he put it in there, just that it's something that happened and that apparently it was the second such plague that he wrote in his stories where it had a drastic effect on the people of Middle-earth. But Having said that, what are your guys' thoughts? Do you think that the Great Plague was Sauron's idea, or do you think it was just something that was natural and just happened to hit all by itself? Do you think that Sauron could have just created a biological weapon to wipe out everybody and just spared himself having to build up armies every thousand years to try and fight his enemies? Let me know in the comments below, but otherwise, this is the Miller Philosopher, and y'all have a good day.